But there is only one place to start, and that is with the man who has been put under a lot of pressure since last Saturday's WBA he World Heavyweight title fight. I'm talking about Robert Smith of the British Boxing Board of Control. He's had to answer claims of a betting scandal, a fix, a farce, and he's had his, had, he's had his integrity grilled in column inches online and by a zillion non-entities on the radio. Well, I spoke to Rob earlier, and I started by asking him what were his impressions of what he saw last Saturday. Well, I think the first thing, I was bitterly disappointed. I mean, you, you go into a show like that, there was a great atmosphere. There had been some very good fights before the big event. Um, the, the TV had done a good job in building it up. The crowd were ready. And then just sheer disappointment. And uh, I don't know exactly what happened, but, um, you know, Audley just seemed to freeze to me. It's as simple as that. Yeah, he seemed to freeze to me. Now, what about, what were your, what were your reactions overnight and then the next day to the comments that David made in the ring? The rather flippant comments about gambling and third round and betting and stuff. Well, I mean, first of all, for, first and foremost, is it comes up. I suppose it's my job, but comes up. Well, that's against the rules. You can't mm. do that. So, uh, first of all, you know, you've got to deal with that issue because, as you can imagine, driving home from Manchester, the phone was going mad. What are you going to do about this? What are you going to do about that? So, you know, first and foremost, he had, if he had done it, it breached the rules. Uh, secondly, when everybody had calmed down a little bit and he obviously retracted it. Mm. Um, um, then obviously you're dealing with a different situation and um, it was decided I had spoken to the chairman of the board um, regarding the, the comments and we decided not to call an emergency meeting uh, straight away we just let things calm down a little bit and deal with it at a later date and obviously we will be discussing his comments and, and other things as well and regarding the tournament at the December meeting and decide where to go from there It's just a pity one or two more other people didn't just let things cool down a little bit before talking Now Rob let me ask you this one thing on this, I must admit, I think people do jump the gun too oh, quickly, yeah, and, yeah, uh, and I do think that sometimes, not just in boxing, but in sport in general, as soon as somebody, I know it's their job, and they do a very good good job, but as soon as somebody's finished a sporting activity where the adrenaline is flowing, mm -hmm. they stick a camera and a microphone in their face, and, and they don't always say the most sensible thing. That's the truth. Then what about a suggestion is that Audley should have some of his money stopped? Well, as you know, um, the board have reg regulations with regard to uh, taking money from boxers who they do not feel have given their best. So we have to look at it. I mean, uh, all I know is that um, uh, he was extremely confident. Uh, well, I spent a lot of time with him um, the day before the fight at the rules meeting because we obviously had a problem with the gloves. I went over to his hotel on Saturday morning because we still hadn't resolved the gloves issue. And he was convinced he was going to win, mm. absolutely convinced he was going to win as were all the people around him. Um, when the fight was announced, you know, I remember talking to many people saying it's a mismatch. But suddenly, with a week or so to go, suddenly it wasn't a mismatch. Mm. And people thought he's got a chance. So I don't know what happened to Audley. Uh, something happened to him when he was called from the dressing room on his, walkway to the, on his walk to the ring because he wasn't the same man I saw in the ring that he was in the dressing room. No, I'm with you on that one. Now, what about um, looking back on it? You know, there have been calls, you know, people have screamed screamed at me and they've screamed at various people saying this fight should never have happened. Have you even thought for one second that perhaps you shouldn't have given permission for Audley to fight? No, not at all. No, not at all. And what about throwing it forward? What about Derek Chisora against Vladimir Klitschko? Well, Derek was approved beforehand. Um, oh, I, 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 put it, I put it this way. I mean, first of all, when you're talking about giving approval, the WBA had said it could be for the WBA Championship. Sure. My job as an administrator for sport in Great Britain, it, for, the, for the sport in Great Britain, is to look after our license holders best that I can. And that is to f fight for their position, to fight for World tam Championships, European Championships, Commonwealth champs etc uh, Audley as far as I was concerned was an undefeated European champion it doesn't matter how he won the European title. he, was, he was European champion mm. we have in the past we have in the past um, had European champions who fought for world titles. Richard Dunn went over and, uh, went over to Germany and fought Muhammad Ali, no less. Absolutely. And when when he was the European when champion. When he was the European champion. Albert Sosnowski fought for a world title when he when was, he the, was European the European champion. champion. So I haven't got a problem with that. Um, mm. I really don't have a problem with that. And it's easy for everybody to say afterwards it was a mismatch. It was. It was. I mean, Audley made a lot of people believe he could win it. And yeah. uh, and no, I haven't got a problem with that. Good. Now, let, let let me ask you this finally, Rob, because um, I think you're about you're a little bit older than me, but not much older. Uh, now I we doubt it, Steve, no, I not doubt easy. It. Now, this is, there's no need for that. Now, I think there's about eight days in it. Yeah. But we you know we both we both 
boxers amateurs and we've yeah. come up through the you know amateur ranks then we were then then you went pro i was always at pro i was writing about boxing from the age of 22 so it's a lot of years at ringside i'm going to ask you a question i'm going to give you my answer have you ever heard of a fixed fight in all your years in and around amateur and pro gyms never yeah never. i'm the same I, as you I, i've i've been as, as you know we've been growing up together really yeah. within this within the sport as an amateur but i mean i i was brought up in a boxing family my father was a boxing manager yeah. and did reasonably well at it um i've never known of anything when i was a youngster i never knew of anything when i was an amateur mm. as a pro boxer i'd never heard of anything as a trainer i never heard of anything uh, working mm. with promoters and managers working with the governing body i've never heard of anything like that i've had fights where i thought i knew who was going to win yes yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> that's, that's a different thing altogether but yeah. no i've never heard of it Okay, this. Uh, let's have a look at what some of the trade people in the trade said. This is some stuff from Boxing Monthly. These are quotes. Harrison could spring an upset. Barry McGuigan. A case of who lands first. John Murray. You can't write Harrison off. Dean Powell. I wouldn't write Har Audley off. Duke McKenzie. You get the ideas? Others predicted a stinker. Some, like Frank Maloney, Jane Couch, Danny Williams, predicted a massacre without any clauses. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's the way it works. We're not sure about that, Bill. People are very angry, though, that there were so few fights shown. Brendan Galbraith in Belfast wants to know why. Well, I don't work for Sky, despite what some people have been writing online, so I can't talk for them. That's the way it works. Now.